In this art lab, I will be coloring my magical landscape drawing. I'm going to be using two different art materials. I'll be using crayons to color in the details. And then I will be using watercolor paint to color the bigger areas. So first I'm going to start with crayons. If you have oil pastels at your house, which is kind of like a stickier crayon, that would work really great as well. So if you would like to try that and you have it at your house, you're welcome to try that. I will use both in mine to kind of show you the differences. So you'll want to first color everything in your picture except for your foreground, the ground, middle ground, for mine it's a mountain, and the background, the sky. So those big areas, we're gonna paint those later. If you don't have paint and would like to just color everything, that's okay too. But if you're painting, leave the bigger areas for the paint. So I think I'll start with crayons and I'm gonna color in my cupcake house frosting. Make sure you press down pretty hard when you're using crayons so that it doesn't look scribbly or too light. We wanna see those bright colors. Then I think I'm gonna switch to oil pastel because I wanna show you both. I'm gonna color my candy with this rose oil pastel. And for oil pastel, because it's a thicker material, if you go over your lines, you can see that it covers it up a little bit. So crayon, not as much, but if you're using oil pastels, try and stay inside of your lines. I think I'll go back to crayons to color my Roji bib. So color my cotton candy clouds. And if you have white clouds, mine is cotton candy so I did it pink, but if you have a white cloud, if you go over it with a white, even though the paper is already white, when we paint over and do the sky, it's gonna look really cool. So you could try that as well. And if you have a rainbow in your picture, Make sure that you color it with the Roy G. Biv colors. Start with red on the top. Usually I say draw it your own way, there's not a right or wrong, but for rainbows, there is a certain order that it should be. Red and then orange, yellow, green, blue and then if you're doing a seven color rainbow the next one would be indigo and then violet i'm doing a six color rainbow so i'm going to skip the indigo and go to violet and then one more spot that i need to color is my chocolate drips i think i'll go back to oil pastel for that Here we go, with just the crayons, I colored everything in my picture except for the background, which is the sky, the middle ground, which is the big part of the mountain, and the foreground, which is the ground. And then I will be adding some watercolor paint to this. Again, you don't have to use the same art medium as I did. If you wanna just color your whole thing with drawing tools, that's okay. But I'm gonna show you what happens when you paint over crayons and oil pastels. So with watercolor paint, of course you need some water, make your paintbrush wet and then make a puddle on top of the color that you're gonna use. Swish it around, but never poke or scoop. You're going to let that color water soak in your paintbrush. And then I'm going to start with my foreground. And the reason why I use crayons and oil pastels in the beginning is because this is called a crayon resist. Resist means to kind of avoid something. So if you try to go over the crayon or oil pastel, you're not really gonna be able to cover it up. It might show up a little bit, but it's not gonna cover up your whole watercolor. And if it does cover up a little bit like that, you can easily wipe it off with your finger or a paper towel. So that's one way to make sure that your painting stays really neat. 
is to do a resist painting. First color, the little parts with oil pastels or crayons for the big areas with watercolor paint. That way you can get very close to your details and you can make sure that the whole picture is colored and painted. That's going to bring your craftsmanship to the next level. Developing your craft is learning how to use your tools neatly, and it is a very important part of being an artist. So I finished my foreground with the grass. I'm going to rinse off my paintbrush very nicely. And then for my mountain, I think I will do yellow. Making my puddle very gently swishing around letting that water soak in but not scooping out the paint just let it soak and then paint the big middle ground now i painted my middle ground i'm gonna swish my paintbrush to clean it off and then I'm going to paint my sky. I'm going to do blue because I want it to be a sunny sky, but remember that the sky is not always blue. It could be an orangish color if it's a sunset. If you're doing a nighttime picture, it might even be black. So don't think that the sky always has to be blue. Mine has a rainbow and I, need to, I want it to make it sunny, so I will use blue today. Make a puddle. And then I'm going to show you what not to do with painting. That's a what not to do. Don't just scribble. Again, one of the goals as an artist is to develop your craft. That means to work neatly, and that means to work all the way to the edge of your paper, go in between your brush strokes to cover it up. That's not the only way to paint, but that is one way to work towards developing your craft. Now here's another what not to do. A lot of people will stop painting their sky at the very top of the paper. And that makes sense because you think of the sky as being really high up. So you might think that the sky stops up there. But if you have a chance, I would like you to look outside the window and see where the sky ends. The sky does not stop until it hits the ground. The blue doesn't just stop at the top of the sky. It goes all the way to the ground. So, it might be a good idea to paint your blue all the way to where your middle ground starts. Whether it's a mountain or a building or something else, try to bring your sky down so that it's touching the ground. And here on the cloud, I showed you a trick where you color it with white. So even though you don't really see it, it's stopping the paint from covering up the, the cloud. And again, if, you, if it does show up a little bit, you can always wipe it off very easily because I did the crayon first. And the crayon is resisting the watercolor paint. Now here, I kind of went over that yellow and it is showing because that yellow was done with watercolor paint. That is the difference between painting the whole picture, which is gonna be a little bit harder, versus doing a resist painting where the crayon helps you keep the colors from mixing. And here's my finished magical landscape drawing using crayon and oil pastel resist and then using watercolor paint for the big areas, which are the foreground, middle ground, and background. When you're finished, make sure that you rinse off your paintbrush, make a little point, put it back in your paint case so that you don't lose it. 